We are here with some legends here, Hermit Moore and Lomas Brown, <laughs> to talk Detroit Lions. It's been so far so great. But before we get into it, Herm, how are you doing today? You know what? I'm doing good. You know, I can't. I have to hurt myself if I was doing any better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, a karate chopping and stuff going on there for Lord, sure. For karate sure. chop Lomas Brown over there. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I, I haven't heard of that one before. I, I I don't want to be doing that good, Herman Moore. Why I hurt? I understand. Myself. I got to be able to bring it down a little bit, man. It's just, that's okay. how great I'm doing. All right, all right. I'm happy for you. <laughs> He's ready to get back <laughs> on the field. That's for sure. We got Lomas Brown. How are you doing, good sir? I, I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Um, I'm not trying to hurt myself like Herman J. Moore is. So life is good. Very, very good. And so is the Detroit Lions right now. So I want to get your guys' perspectives. You Obviously, you played for the Lions, the greatest like of all time. So what do you guys see from this football team this year, this Dan Campbell football team? Lomas, you're in the building. You see a lot. What is taking place overall with this team? Yeah, I mean, I think he got a, a group of like-minded guys, you know, guys that have been cast off from other teams, you know, guys that have been called considered underdogs, you know. It's not all about the, the, the glitz and glamour with these guys, and I think he got a lot of young guys, young, you know, I have to emphasize, believing in, in his philosophy, believing in the rest of the coaching staff philosophy, I think him, I think Brad Holmes has, Brad Holmes has done a great of uh, bringing in this talent. And right now they believe. They're a confident group. They're playing great on defense, and they believe. And that's what's all all about, like the belief and actually doing it. Herm, what are you seeing from this team? Five and one, beating up on teams by 14 points as of late. Thoughts? You know, what I'm saying is a, a group of guys that, are playing together because they don't have to be household names. They're playing unselfish football. And in doing that, they don't realize they're making a name for themselves as, as a, a team that the, the, I think the nation is really enjoying seeing the, the transformation that has taken place. I think they like the personality and what they've seen with Coach Campbell, uh, with what Brad Holmes has been able to do uh, with the, the front office. And then when you look at the players who ultimately are the ones who have to get it done, they, they're a band of brothers and uh, they're, they're no, they, they seem to play with not a chip on their shoulders, but with the confidence that is required to say there's a task that needs to be done. And that's to go out and win football games. And it doesn't matter who the stars are. It doesn't matter where it comes from. And they seem to embody that. And that, that's, that has to be great for someone like Coach Campbell to see. The communication, I told you before, I said this when they first came in. I said, because of the coaching staff type players that he's brought in and the type of person that Coach Campbell is, that if he can crack that communication gap that seems to bring teams um, uh, into a place of where it gets off the rails when things go bad, but get this team where they feel like they're in it together, that they're going to do something special. And that's exactly what we see happening here. And they didn't have to overspend. And as Loma said, I mean, they didn't have to overspend to get the, the players to this level that they have that other teams have had to kind of sell the farm for. And that's what I think gives them the sustaining power to actually be able to do this long term. This isn't just a flash in the pan. Oh, 100 percent. PFF just came out today. Offensive line for the Detroit Lions ranked number one in the NFL. Now we got a great offensive lineman here. We've had injuries on this offensive line. What has taken place this offensive line that we are dictating the line of scrimmage there, Loam? Yeah, I mean, the great thing is, like you're saying, they're rated nine, and they really think about the injuries that they've had up front, you know, early in this year. And so they really still, I don't think, have played as a total group for a whole game. You know, so that's impressive for them to be number one. But, I mean, one, you have to give credit to those guys because that's something we talked about during training camp when I was Each and every one of those guys, from Panesu to Teller Decker to Frank Ragnow, uh, all these guys, Jonah Jackson, they talked about wanting to be the number one ranked offensive line in the NFL. And right now they have achieved that. That's one of their, that was one of those. You give Ben Johnson a lot of credit, the offensive coordinator. 
he's been calling some great games and he's also been designing some great plays to put guys in position so they can have success. So everything kind of works together, but it all starts and stops with the offensive line. Jared has been protected very well this season. When they want to run the ball, they can run the ball, and we know how important that is, especially when you get in tight games. Um, we'll see how it is now moving forward without David Montgomery. I don't know how long he'll be out, but we'll see how the run game looks moving ahead. But I think the old line's done a great job this year, and I, I expect them to continue to do that. Statistically speaking, Tampa Bay Buccaneers a top 10 defense, very stout defense. Mm -hmm. And the Lions were having a little bit of trouble, not, you know, trouble in the fact that they're so good offensively, but you're going against a good defense here. After Jamison Williams scored that touchdown, I noticed that the defense changed for Tampa Bay and you were seeing wide receivers like St. Brown get open and chunk plays were occurring. Herm, as a, as a wide receiver, what does Jamison Williams do to defenses, and is this something that can go forward where the Baltimore Ravens may have to adjust and other teams? I think uh, one thing I, I believe teams are going to start to to do is they're going to play based on personnel. When, when Jamison Williams is in the game, I think they're going to play a little bit deeper or they're going to put some type of a, a, a bracket coverage, uh, a high-low, so someone's underneath, someone's over top. And then that way they can get back to playing normal defense, depending on the package that the Lions go with. But to your point, he brings in a dynamic that you see also with uh, Cleef Raymond, you see with Josh Reynolds, and that's the ability to have the chunk plays to get the yards down the field. And then you got Amara St. Brown, who has become a, a, a master craftsman in working the underneath, uh, finding the soft spots in the zone. It's going to be a matter of time before teams start to really press him at the line of scrimmage or, uh, have some type of combination on him. So other players have to make plays. And seeing Jamison Williams make that that long, deep play is something that's been missing. We've seen it happen with some of the play action call uh, with Sam Laporta and, and on the play action because of the, the uh, effectiveness of the running game. But th when you can come in and dial up plays and you can come in and let people know this is what we're doing, this is what our players are capable of doing, and they have to change, then that's when the defense has to make adjustments. Tampa Bay – I think had to make the adjustments because now there is a, a legit deep threat uh, that can get one-on-one -on -one and get behind the safety. Uh, so that's going to bode well for this team if they can have the consistency of doing that. And also, as Lomas had mentioned, this is um, an offensive line that really hasn't had everyone together for a long period of time consistently throughout the, the season, but they've been very effective against opponents' defenses, but they're going to get challenged. Uh, I look for teams to dial up more blitz packages, like I said before, go a little bit more man to man and also do a little bit more um, uh, press coverage because the, the free release that the tight ends and the receivers are getting uh, just gives too much time for the defense. But the Lions, I say what, continue to exploit that. You know, I really, yeah. yeah, go and ahead. I say, yeah, I was just going to throw in there. I really see them now, you know, especially with David B. I see them daring the Lions to try to run the ball now because, again, to me, he's the cog that made that end goal. Jared is playing at an MVP level. I'm not going to lie to you. When you start talking about the MVPs of this league, Jared's name has to be in there. But when, Jer but when uh, David is out of that game, even with Jared in there, it just doesn't run the same. I don't I don't think you could do some of the things that you can normally do when you don't have a David in there. So I look for teams to probably even start even bringing the 50 down in the box and, for, and like I say, taking that away from us. Then we'll see, because Herm, I don't know how you feel. I'm still, I got to see it over a consistent basis. Yeah, Jamison can run. But I got to see him run and catch the ball on a consistent basis before I start getting worried about him and start talking about bracketing him or leaving somebody real deep for him. I just got to see it on a consistent basis. And I think a lot of teams are like, show me. Right. They, they will be that way. And as you mentioned, you know, a lot of the, the big plays that we saw with Sam Laporta, we saw out of the tight end position came off the play action. It came off a of misdirection and linebackers being overzealous because of the run game. So if you take away that, players have to then win the one-on-one -on -one battles. And if they don't do that, then that's going to that's gonna mean that the line has to block longer 
um, they have to hold it a little bit tighter. Linebackers are playing tighter, so the underneath doesn't become as as open as it has been. Uh, but yeah, with with Williams, I, I agree. It's 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 not one play makes a superstar. Uh, it's going to be can he do that over time, and will he not be just a one trick pony? Meaning he's only good for the deep throw because that's too easy to defend uh, down in and down out. He's going to have to definitely show that he has the hands, he has the tenacity and the capability to make the tough catches over the middle to to do the other dynamic routes. Uh, that makes him a complete wide receiver. Hey, Lions are, are winning on three phases, but how how about a fourth phase? We talked about this, Lomas, before we started recording. The Lions fans traveling. Yes. You're, you're there. What are you seeing in the impact that it's taking place all these fans at, at away games? Man, it's unbelievable, man. It's, man, her, man, I'm telling you, man, it'd be so much fun because I go down on the field before the game and I get a chance, you know, just to walk around on the field. And like the Lion fans be the first ones in the stadium. They always come all the way down to the lower bowls, even though they know most of their tickets are way up there and stuff. And then they be so enthusiasm, enthusiastic. And then when we win the game, man, especially when like Tampa Bay, they start leaving early. Man, you see all that blue from way down there just start coming till we had the whole lower bowl all the way around the field was full with Lions fan, man. And this has been like that in Kansas City. It was like that in Tampa. It's been like that every road trip we take Green Bay, we took over Lambeau. So, man, they, they just needed it in her, though. No. That, man, the fans just needed something to cheer about, man. That's all they needed, man. They've been there. They was there when we were there and told us back when we were in the locker rooms, man, if y'all ever won the Super Bowl, you would own the state of Michigan. So <laughs> we just couldn't get it done. And uh, But the fans, they've been there. It's It's, it's, it's got to be amazing to be there to see that. And as much as I've heard about the Lion fan base traveling now, and I think we've been there in spurts in past years, but now that you have the ability to stand behind something and truly be a fan behind a team, and a lot of people are saying, well, the, you know, they're bandwagon uh, fan bandwagon uh, fans that are jumping on. No, it's not. It's 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 fans that now are coming out because they have something to follow, mm-hmm. and they have something consistently to cheer for versus spending that time, energy, and effort, and and getting the same result. So. It's wonderful to see that. I mean, Pittsburgh, everyone who knows this, and I, I am a Lion Nation <laughs> bleeding blue. You know that all day. I'm from the East Coast. I grew up as a, a Steeler fan. And that was another – their nation traveled. And it's so great to see that now I can say our Lions nation travels and we're taking over stadiums. Like, that's the other part of the game. Watching to see if we take over a stadium. So seeing that happen is 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 – is is great for us as alum. I know you're excited. I'm I'm extremely yeah. excited, but I want to see this keep going. And I'm looking at the schedule. Now, I'm not kidding you. I'm looking at the schedule that is remaining, and you can't help but start to go. Well, maybe, just maybe, because I don't see any impossible games left mm-hmm. on this stadium. I mean, on this uh, the schedule. I see the Lions with an opportunity, based on what I've seen and watching. A lot of teams are going to face play. There's only a handful that I say are going to be problematic, but there's the other 90%. I don't think you just walk over and say the Lions can't win those games. Yeah. I think they can. I, I think the biggest thing is is just the injury bug. That I think that's going to be the biggest thing for the Lions because I agree with you, Ern. I think this is a tough game in Baltimore coming up. I also thought Tampa Bay was a tough game, and they passed that text. That test, you know, old gritty game, how they play Tampa Bay. I expect more of the same this weekend with a good Baltimore team, even though Lamar Jackson, that's a different animal, you know. But, you know, with their defense, I expect more of the same. But you're right. If you start looking at, then you're talking about Vegas after that, and then a bye week, you know. So if you start looking beyond that, you're right, man. I mean, 12, 13 wins, maybe more than that. That that doesn't seem out the round. Dan Campbell said last year, all roads leave through Detroit, and it's mm-hmm. looking like it potentially could be that. Moving off the field, though, Herman, I hear you've had a project in the works for a couple years now. Can you explain this a little bit? 
Well, there, there's a there's a there's a guy that um, when I first came into the league that he he was like a big brother, and he's remained to be the same person I I met the date from day one. And there's something I've been working on, pretty special for the last two years, to pay tribute not only to him as a a former teammate and a professional player, but just a person. Like this is one of the most genuine, kindest just personable people that I've ever met in my life. And I'm, I'm honored to be to call him brother and mentor. And uh, I'm looking forward to unveiling some things to, to just pay that homage to him and show that. So we got this thing coming out called Herman Lowe. And uh, I, I've spoken to Lomas about it. He has never seen them. He doesn't know what they're, what they are, <laughs> uh, but know, I'm man. hoping to be able to reveal those, those uh, things that I'm paying in tribute to him that literally I've had someone working on this for two years. Uh, so there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of time, energy, and everything that's gone behind this. And I'm hoping that the, the nation and everyone will come and celebrate this with us and also celebrate what's been a great brotherhood uh, between myself and Lowe. And uh, also our love for the, and this is a tribute back to our fan base um, and, and be all, all real talk. It, this is thinking of, of them and saying, I want to share just our bond, um, Lo and I, but also the bond and the love that we have for our land, our Lions fan in the community. That's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, I want to see it too. I, <laughs> I'm like all that, everything he said, and I want to see it. So I'm like, he's been teasing me like this, man. I don't know why Herman playing with my emotions like that. <laughs> Come on, man. Now, what's wrong with you, man? No, man. This is this is because uh, this is anyone who knows us know. We 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 think it's thieves, man, and that uh that we're 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 very much different, but we're very much like-minded in terms of how we we roll with the community. We love people, man. We love the fact that we were given this beautiful opportunity to play a professional sport and we played at the highest level. And the celebration of you also low, man, and and um the Hall of Fame is just well overdue and behind, but seeing you go into the pride of the Lions. Uh, which is also overdue. I'm, I'm excited for that. So this is just me, man. Everything I'm going to show you, everything I'm going to share comes from number deep love, bro. And, mm -hmm. and just, just fun times that I go, if anyone wants to know who you and I are, they'll get them out of this. I'm hoping they'll, they'll see the, the depiction that we put inside of this work and it's very artistic. And, uh, but we're looking to roll it out and I'm asking the fans to join us and also the communities. And we're going to do a lot of this for fundraising as well. So come out and support us for it. All right, that is so awesome here. Um, before we go, though, quick prediction. Do you guys got the Lions beating the Baltimore Ravens? Loam, or, you know, you got the Lions winning, losing? What do you got for Sunday? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be more the same, you know, the Tampa Bay game. I think the Lions just really have to contain Lamar Jackson, and I think they'll be able to put a lot of pressure on him. Not really impressed with his offensive line. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep doing what we've been doing up front on the O-line, protect Jared. So I think it, I'm looking more like a 24, maybe 14 game, somewhere around there. Nice. Who you got? Oh, I got the Lions. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I, because I, I need this 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 Kool-Aid and everything else that they got that's blue to keep rolling, uh, I am picking them, but I'm only picking them by a field goal. <laughs> and, and the reason being is I think Lamar is going to be a problem, but I think the offense has found a rhythm and a way to get to the end zone, even if they have to work their way in. And I've seen them be able to do that. They don't have to throw throw from outside to get in. Uh, I, I, I see this as a 10-13 type game. I just mm -hmm. don't see it being a lot, of, a lot of points. I think Baltimore is going to be able to get some things defensively done. I think it's going to come down to uh, an errant throw or or – something that happens they, they got to contain lamar he's the x factor uh and if they do that i think the lions can pull out a a very very close game otherwise you know it it, it could be a, a a long day for them mm -hmm. awesome appreciate everybody make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that like button it does help out and uh, you know this this channel keeps growing and so does the detroit lions fan base with that said adios deuces <laughs>